The genus Crocodilius contains roughly half of modern crocodilian species, and the vast majority of true crocodiles. While most of the species contained in Crocodilius are still alive today, some of the most impressive are now extinct. Among these were Crocodilius anthropophagus and Crocodilius thobiarnarsoni. Collectively referred to as the Paleo-African crocodiles, these two large crocodilians were each other's closest relatives, and were the most dangerous predators in Africa when humanity's ancestors roamed the prehistoric savannas. Crocodilius anthropophagus' species name means human eater, in reference to how the bones of early hominids bear its bite marks. Crocodilius thobiarnarsoni, sometimes called thobiarnarsen's crocodile, is named in reference to a much more positive interaction between crocodilians and hominids. Its name is in honor of the late John Thobiarnarsen, who played a major role in crocodilian research and conservation, and is one of the reasons so many of the other species of Crocodilius are still alive today. Fossils of Thobiarsen's crocodile are found in the Turkana Basin in Kenya and Ethiopia. Its oldest fossils are about 5 to 4.2 million years old, while the most recent are about 2 million years old, after the beginning of the Ice Ages. Crocodilius anthropophagus has only been found at the Old Avia Gorge in Tanzania, and lived from 2.5 to 1.8 million years ago. Since it is difficult to impossible to tell fragmentary fossils of Crocodilius anthropophagus, Thobiarnarsen's crocodile, and the Nile crocodile apart from each other, the geographic and temporal range of the Paleo-African crocodiles was almost certainly much larger. Both Paleo-African crocodiles were larger than the Nile crocodile, which is the largest crocodilian in Africa today. Crocodilius anthropophagus was over 5 meters long. However, it was smaller than male saltwater crocodiles, who grow to about 6 meters long and are the largest living reptiles. While Tharbjarnarsen's crocodile is mostly known from skulls, it is estimated to have been between 6.2 to 6.5 meters long. However, the calculations used have often underestimated the size of large crocodilians. A length of 7.5 meters is more likely, and a length of over 8 meters is considered very much possible. While Tharbjar Narsen's crocodile still wasn't as large as the more famous giants such as Dinosuchus and Peruosaurus, it was at least the largest species of Crocodilius. There was one true crocodile that may have been larger, Eutheckodon. Euthecodon actually lived in Africa at roughly the same time as the Paleo-African crocodiles. However, it had the teeth and slender snout of a piscivore, or fish eater. Therefore, even though it was smaller, an adult crocodilius Thobiar narsoni outmatched Euthecodon and any other predator in its native environment. One of the features that unites the Paleo-African crocodiles is their nostrils. While they were at the top of the skull, like in most other crocodilians, they pointed forward rather than up. More noticeably, the skulls of the Paleo-African crocodiles were very broad, and by crocodilian standards, deep. Thobiar Narsen's crocodile took this to an even greater extreme than Crocodilius anthropophagus. One of the larger skulls required four people to carry it. Crocodilius anthropophagus had triangular, horn-like projections above its ears. These were extensions of the squamosal bone of the skull. Thobiar Narsen's crocodile also had squamosal horns, although they were smaller. Their purpose was to attract mates and scare off rivals. This is not just speculation, because squamosal horns are also present in some other species, such as the Siamese crocodile. One of the most prominent examples is the extinct Voe robustus, who was in Madagascar when the Paleo-African crocodiles were alive. The African Ice Age savannas the Paleo-African crocodiles inhabited were both familiar, but not quite the same as today. While many modern species were present, such as leopards and African elephants, there were also other extinct species, such as Dinotherium and Sivatherium. Of course, their most famous contemporaries were humanity's ancestors and close relatives. The hominid bones with clear Crocodilius anthropophagus bite marks are from Homo habilis, 
and a bone that's either from Homo habilis or the more robust Paraanthropus. Given the size of the crocodilians, it's thought those who left the bite marks were juveniles, since fully grown adults could have simply swallowed them whole. Given their large size, the Paleo-African crocodiles likely focused on megafauna, with humanity's ancestors being one of the rarer components of their diet. Before the Paleo-African crocodiles were recognized as distinct species, their fossils were thought to be those of Nile crocodiles or their direct ancestors. This was in part because most of the scientists who found them were mammal experts, usually looking for the bones of hominids. Though the Paleo-African crocodiles are no longer thought to be the ancestors of the Nile crocodile, or any other living species, their legacy does extend to the present in another way. While the dragons of most myths were based on a variety of creatures, crocodilians are thought to have been the template. While more modern species likely inspired the myths, it was the primal fear that evolved in response to the crocodilians of Africa that caused them to make such an impact. Of these, the Paleo-African crocodiles were the largest and most dangerous. Therefore, while Crocodilius anthropophagus and Crocodilius thabiarnarsoni are now extinct, their legacy lives on in the fiction of the descendants of their prey. Thank you for watching, and a thank you to Sarah Dean for suggesting the topic of this video. Have a great day, and if you enjoyed the video, please remember to hit the like button.